This is a little shop project that is well worth the hour or so that it'll take to make it. It's a dust collection manifold for a shop vacuum that splits one hose into three outlets for hooking up multiple machines with blast gates so you can direct all the suction to where you need it. It's simple to make from just a few scraps of wood and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Start with three 12 inch long pieces of two by four material. The rounded over edges have been trimmed away so the final width is around three and a quarter inches. The outer diameter of most shop vacuum hose end fittings is two and a quarter inches. Now that happens to be a Forstner bit size that I have. So that's what we use to bore three holes all the way through. Here's how those holes are laid out. Now what if you don't have a Forstner bit that fits your shop vac hose end? Just use the largest one that you have and then I'll show you how to enlarge those holes further with a router. Here we made a template by rough cutting the hole with the jigsaw, then refining that hole with a rasp and some sandpaper so I have one hole that fits the hose end snugly. This template is then centered over the smaller hole on the actual workpiece that you cut with the bit that you did have. Notice how a fence was attached to the template to help align it while securing everything in a vise. You could use double-sided tape to secure the template instead if you prefer. Now a template bit is installed in a router. This features a bearing that's above the bit. That bearing will ride on the inside of the hole in the template, cutting the hole in the workpiece beneath to that same larger size. Since this template bit wasn't long enough to cut all the way through a workpiece in a single pass, the template's removed. Then the freshly enlarged upper portion of the hole serves as its own template with the bearing of the bit riding inside it as it enlarges the lower portion. It'll take some time to repeat this on all of the holes required in the project. There's seven of them in total. If you don't want to invest in a Forstner bit that's going to fit the outer diameter of your shop vac's hose end. In the end, you'll need a total of three work pieces, identical in size, but two of them have three holes, while the third piece has a single hole at the center. Here, some half-inch wide strips of scrap material have been temporarily tacked around the perimeter of the single hole workpiece. The same template bit is now used to dish out the surface. The bearing of the bit is riding on the strips to create a rim. Again, my bit's cutting length is relatively short, so the strips are removed, and then a second pass is made to deepen that recess. This time, that newly created rim serves in the place of the template to guide the bit. The final depth of the dished out area is 7 eighths of an inch. If you don't have a template router bit, you can freehand that recess with a regular straight bit in a router. It doesn't have to be perfect. It'll be hidden inside the manifold where it's seldom going to be seen. But I do recommend working up to the full 7 eighths of an inch depth with several light passes instead of all at once. Alternatively, you could create that dish in two layers, gluing some strips of wood to a thinner 3 quarter inch thick workpiece rather than a full thickness inch and a half workpiece. I don't really like this method as well because it creates more seams that could potentially leak air unless they're sealed up with some silicone. And the dished out area ends up being a bit shallower by about an eighth of an inch, which reduces the room inside the manifold where the dust flows. Whatever method you use, you'll want to repeat it on one of the three hold workpieces as well. This will give you two dishes, one with three holes and another with one hole. That leaves the single remaining three hole workpiece. On that, you'll attach some pieces of thin material. I prefer 8 inch hardboard or MDF, something that's smooth on both sides. You could use quarter inch material if that's all you have on hand. Here are the dimensions and placement of the strips. Make sure there's no gaps between them and use glue, not just nails. Now cut some rectangles from the same material to fit between the strips you just mounted. These are the blast gates. You can refer to the dimensions here as a guide, but you may have to make some small adjustments to your widths so they fit well, yet slide in and out easily. Each one may have to be custom fit to its spot. Some sandpaper will be ideal for any fine tuning. Next, set the other three hold workpiece on top, dished side up, with the thin strips sandwiched between them. These brads are temporarily holding it together while pilot holes were bored 
and then screws make the connection more permanent. Don't over tighten the screws. You want your blast gates to slide in and out easily. If the fit is too tight, then just back your screws off a little bit. Besides the two screws on either side of the center hole, I put another countersunk screw on each end to help hold it together securely. Now some quarter inch strips, which were just ripped from the edge of some more two by four material, are glued around the outer perimeter of the single hold workpiece. Here are the dimensions. Note how they're offset three quarters of an inch from the bottom undished side. This produces a stepped rim around the dished side, as you see here. Some adhesive backed foam weather stripping is added to the inner rim to create a seal. The upper portion of the manifold sits in this recess with its dished side down. Now during use, when the shop vac is on, the suction holds these two pieces together and that weather stripping prevents air from leaking out or in. But when the vacuum is off, the manifold can easily be opened back up to clear out any clogs you might get. This whole thing can be mounted to the wall with screws driven through the inside of that outer rim, just as long as the heads are countersunk so they sit below the surface and they won't interfere with the whole thing going back together. And that's all there is to it. It's an extremely useful project that costs very little to build and it'll serve you well for many years. Want to see something else that'll serve you well? MyWoodCutters.com is the sort of small business I like to support. Stefan is a great guy and he can find you knives and cutters for almost any joiner, planer, shaper, or molding machine. And his are the best prices if you're planning to upgrade to a helical carbide cutter head. Please use the link below this video to check with him before you buy somewhere else. Some small businesses are just worth supporting. By the way, if you're wondering about the new backdrop, we are changing some things around here. There is going to be some new hand tool cabinets built and that'll be over in the corner. So you will see that in some of the videos. You'll see this in some of the videos depending on whether I'm working behind the table saw or behind the bench. So stay tuned for that.